There are often two distinct kinds of characters in a story, the ones we see and the ones we don't. In other words, there are visible characters and unseen characters in a story. Well, a visible character is, as the name suggests, visible to the reader or the audience, an unseen character is mostly implied in the story. Be it through the use of certain props or the cast of characters occasionally referring to them, an unseen character garners more significance than any visible character. Hollywood enthusiasts would be able to understand this better with the example of Charlie Townsend from Charlie's Angels. Here, Charlie's identity is only known to Bosley, while the other characters, and the audience too, are aware of his presence only through the speaker. Intriguingly, in the 1980s, Hideyuki Kikuchi seemed to use a similar idea when he was busy crafting what would become one of the most engaging supernatural stories in Japanese pop culture, Vampire Hunter D. A series of Japanese light novels that were later adapted into anime films, Vampire Hunter D follows the adventures of the titular character battling against the vampire nobility in a post-apocalyptic world where humans and vampires share hostile relations with each other. While the film series has its own share of horror, gore, as as well as a dash of romance, Vampire Hunter D quite remarkably builds up the suspense surrounding the character of the sacred ancestor, who never appears in the film except in the form of a dimly lit portrait and the other characters talking about him. So in this video, we will be exploring the origin story of the sacred ancestor and thus emphasizing his significance in the grand scheme of things. Vampires rule the world and he rules them the sacred ancestor in the Vampire Hunter D movies. The Vampire Hunter D series consists of two anime films. The first was released in 1985, while the second, titled Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, appeared in the year 2000. To give you a brief summary of both plots, our hero, D, is a bounty hunter who takes down vampires and grotesque mutants for a living. However, his profession is intertwined with his lust for revenge against the nobility of the vampires that seek to subjugate the human race by any means necessary. Being a Dampier, which is a human-vampire hybrid, D can neither lead the life of a human being nor give in to the crass bloodlust of his vampire self, which he is often reminded of by his companion, Left Hand. Hence, he seeks to end the centuries of oppression under the vampire rule, which was established on Earth by the Sacred Ancestor. It is worth noting that both the Vampire Hunter D films refer to the Sacred Ancestor in several ways. But how? Let's find out. The Sacred Ancestor in the first film. In the 1985 Vampire Hunter D film, the Sacred Ancestor is first shown in a scene where Count Magnus Lee's daughter, Larmika Lee, looks up to the former's portrait in the hall and prays for his watchful eye to protect the Lee family from danger. The Sacred Ancestor is mentioned briefly for the second time in the film when Larmika confronts her father to stop his marriage with Doris Lang, a young and beautiful human girl he had bitten in the past so that he can bring her into the Lee family as his wife. However, it is in the climax when Count Magnus, while at the brink of death, realizes that Dee's face resembles that of the sacred ancestor himself. This does indeed prove that the third time is a charm. The Sacred Ancestor in the second film Next, in Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, the Sacred Ancestor is again mentioned multiple times over the course of the film, while his absence still prevails in the plot. However, the Sacred Ancestor's identity is further developed via the character of Countess Carmilla Bathory, one of the major antagonists in the anime film. On their way to the castle of Shatha, Left Hand tells D that it is actually the home of Countess Carmilla. In addition, Left Hand narrates the story of how the Vampire King killed Countess Carmilla 5,000 years ago because of the harrowing atrocity she committed out of her unquenchable thirst for human blood. And here again, towards the end of the film, as Countess Carmilla succumbs to her wounds, she looks at Dee and could not help but wonder whether he is an incarnation of the Vampire King himself. One important thing to note here is that the Vampire King's position is implied here as being almost synonymous with that of a progenitor. Thus, the sheer ambiguity surrounding his existence, along with the fact that he doesn't appear at all in the anime films, suggests the undeterred significance of his identity in the course of the light novels. So who exactly is the Sacred Ancestor, and does he still exist in the canon? Who is he, and how long has he been around? The Real Identity of the Sacred Ancestor Quite frankly, Kikuchi, the author of the Vampire Hunter D novels, never gave any proper details regarding the identity of the Sacred Ancestor. But, the 1985 film did give away an important piece of information at a crucial point in the plot. As Count Magnus Lee writhes in pain as he is nailed, or, well, crucified to the wall, he takes a last look at D, only to realize that his face is eerily similar to that of the Sacred Ancestor. Here, filmmaker Tuyu Ashida makes a conscious effort to show Count Magnus's point of view by superimposing the 
sacred ancestor's portrait with Dee's face. This is followed by the last words of Count Magnus, in which he asks Dee out of sheer horror whether he is the illegitimate offspring of the sacred ancestor. However, what is quite intriguing in this context is that Kikuchi actually gives us two brief yet major hints in the first book of Vampire Hunter D to suggest who the sacred ancestor is. While the ending plays out quite differently in the novel than in the anime film, Count Magnus has the same epiphany. The only difference is that in the novel, Count Magnus asks D about how he learned the swift way of stabbing someone with his lone sword, which goes like this. I, I had to beg our sacred ancestor to teach me that very same trick. Could it be? My lord, are you truly his? The second hint appears on the next page when a dejected Larmika asks her final question to D before he departs the crumbling castle with the Lang siblings. Kindly allow me to ask you one thing. Your name. D. Is that D as in Dracula? This is immediately followed by D responding to Larmika's question, although the omnipresent narrator in the book fails to transcribe his answer. Still, it is evident that in the first Vampire Hunter D novel, these two hints that Kikuchi leaves us with make it clear, if not confirmed in the canon, that the sacred ancestor is also known as the infamous Count Dracula. Besides this, the very name Sacred Ancestor, by which the nobility hail him, also suggests his reputation as a supernatural entity that has existed for quite a long period of time. As a matter of fact, his role as progenitor of the race of vampires that now plague the earth is clear enough by the name itself. Most importantly, the manner in which the vampires refer to the sacred ancestor in both films bears a reverential awe towards this ancient creature, so much so that he is often likened to a divine being or, quite often, recognized as the king of the vampires. Well, truth be told, his antiquity cannot be the only reason for the vampire nobles to deem the sacred ancestor as the supreme being of them all. There must be some sort of abilities he possesses, the kind which incites such unfathomable degrees of fear that the subjugation of the nobles to the sacred ancestor is nothing short of normalcy. So, how powerful is the sacred ancestor? What is the true extent of his powers? Why the sacred ancestor is revered as a god in Vampire Hunter D. Over the course of both the anime films, the king of vampires is talked about time and again by members of the nobility. While it is a known fact that he founded the vampire race to thrive on earth, the sacred ancestor is bestowed with a particular set of skills that is unique only to him, thus giving him an edge over the other vampires that exist in the universe of Vampire Hunter D. We'll take a look at these, but first, let's observe his appearance followed by his charismatic personality. Appearance. According to Kikuchi's descriptions as given in the Vampire Hunter D novels, the sacred ancestor is an omnipresent and omniscient being that exists beyond the typical conventions of space and time. While the films did not explore much regarding this, it is worth noting that the vampires still look up to the sacred ancestor for protection against any bad omen. As far as his physical appearance is concerned, the sacred ancestor is quite tall in comparison with D. However, a remarkable feature of his physique is the dominant attitude, often appearing from the apparent calmness and integrity that lies in his personality. But the King of Vampires is capable of changing into a different being altogether. For instance, in the Scenes of the Unholy War, that is, Volume 15 in the Vampire Hunter D novel series, D encounters the Sacred Ancestor, who morphs into a horrifying colossal entity. This transformation is characterized by gigantic bodily proportions, followed by Count Dracula's disturbing laughter that often rivals the likes of Thunder. The grotesque sight itself can be perceived as one of the extensions of his own personality. Personality. Speaking of personality traits, Count Dracula seems to have a calm demeanor from the outset. Albeit with blood red eyes and porcelain white skin, the sacred ancestor seems to radiate a kind of tranquility that is mesmerizing as well as menacing. At the same time, the sacred ancestor's intellect surpasses the best of his time. A noteworthy fact about the King of the Vampires is that in the year 4000 AD, he attempted to combine the genetic material of vampires with that of humans in order to prolong the survival of his own race. Although the vampire population has been able to grow mostly via the intermingling of vampires with human beings, the sacred ancestor's only successful creation has been a Dampier, who is, you guessed it, our vampire hunter D. Most of all, the divine attributes that reside within him are unabated, irrespective of the nature of his own actions. His reputation as the progenitor of a race of vampires on Earth in a post-apocalyptic dystopia is further developed by the evolutionary differences between vampires and human beings. And to understand this better, we will have to delve into the sacred ancestor's powers and abilities. Powers and Abilities Besides his role as the possible progenitor of the vampire race, the sacred ancestor has the ability to bestow certain attributes to vampires 
particularly those who possess the pure blood of his race, such as the nobles. To understand the power dynamics better, consider the following three characters from the 1985 Vampire Hunter D film, Count Magnus, Ray Ginsey, and Dr. Sam Faringo. Count Magnus is a pure blood, which is the primary reason why his endurance, strength, and speed are unparalleled when compared with the other two. His henchman, Ray Ginsey, on the other hand, has the unique ability to bend space at his own will. Even then, Ray fails to murder Count Magnus on the day of the latter's marriage, which eventually leads to Ray's gruesome demise. And finally, Dr. Sam Faringo, the elderly physician who later turned against them after he became a vampire, barely gets any special power at all. Thus, Count Magnus, Ray, and Dr. Faringo are all vampires, but each of them has different attributes as far as heightened abilities are concerned. So, the purer the blood, the more powerful a vampire will be. After all, it is in this manner that Count Dracula bestowed D with his companion, Left Hand. At the same time, the magnitude of the sacred ancestor's presence can be related to a form of his power. This means his sheer presence in a particular place would certainly affect the surroundings in the direst of ways, and it is, in fact, a common attribute among vampires. This is best depicted in the first scene of Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, when the vampire Meyer Link comes to kidnap his beloved human, Charlotte Elborn. In that scene, Meyer's ominous presence was presented by focusing on certain aspects of the neighborhood, such as the withering of flowers and a stray dog whining out of fear and horror. Moreover, Count Dracula's telekinetic powers are equally spectacular. To put it simply, it is from the King of the Vampires himself that certain kinds of movements have been developed and passed down to the next generation of vampires that inhabit the Earth. This includes the use of his cape to inflict deadly attacks on his adversaries, along with the ability to teleport from one place to another. In short, Count Dracula's blood can be deemed as one of the major causes of genetic mutation taking place extensively in the universe of Vampire Hunter D. However, the Sacred Ancestor has two distinct instruments, both of which help him remain immune to the attacks made by members of his own race as well as by the humans themselves. The Slander Prosecution Decree Although defending himself against human beings is no doubt a natural thing to do, the Sacred Ancestor's decision to bind all the vampires under the Slander Prosecution Decree does speak volumes about his paranoia towards his own creations. So, what is it exactly? The Slander Prosecution Decree is a declaration that has been prevailing since the beginning of time, with the emergence of the King of the Vampires himself. According to its terms, a vampire must never attempt to humiliate the Sacred Ancestor, upon which they will face the consequences of their actions. This is enforceable solely by the Sacred Ancestor himself, thanks to his divine status in the hierarchy of vampire nobles over the course of the story. Hmm, punishing vampires for slandering the name of their creator, the Sacred Ancestor. Does that ring any bells to you? Especially of an anime whose latest season was released earlier this year? If you still can't recall, we'll help you out. The Slander Prosecution Degree is surprisingly similar to Muzan Kibutsuji's curse on his own demons as seen in Demon Slayer. According to the demons who join his nefarious league, if they ever utter the name of Muzan Kibutsuji in front of anybody, they will be killed immediately by Muzan himself. Similarly, as per the slandering prosecution decree, any noble who attempts to slight or defame the name of Count Dracula suffers grave consequences. So if this is what keeps the fang threats away from the King of Vampires, what about humans? The Akashic Record An indispensable part of the Vampire Hunter D stories, the ownership of the Akashic Record is what sets the Sacred Ancestor apart from the rest of vampires and dampiers in the Vampire Hunter D world. The Akashic Record consists of ether, with the sole purpose of recording the events that take place within the universe. As a matter of fact, in the book Vampire Hunter D, Tyrant Stars, Parts 3 and 4, the narrator elaborates that the Sacred Ancestor is one of the very few entities that can read and understand the contents of the Akashic Record. Record. So you might be wondering how a simple record can be that threatening to human beings. Well, the answer is pretty simple. It can change reality in any way its owner wants to. That's right, the Akashic Record can be misused to manipulate the events that took place in the past, present, and future. To be precise, the Akashic Record has the ability to alter reality. Interestingly enough, only one of the known characters is immune to the reality warping tendencies of the Akashic Record, and that is none other than our titular hero, D. And this brings us to the penultimate section of our video. His only weakness, his own offspring. There have been quite a handful of instances in pop culture as well as literature where sons turn against fathers out of pure disgust and enmity, and the relationship between D and the sacred ancestor is no exception. However, the twist in the tale lies exactly here. Given the fact that the sacred ancestor shares a possible paternal bond with D, our vampire hunter is the only formidable adversary who is capable of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe against the supreme progenitor of the vampire races. Well, you may wonder if such a show 
showdown is just for the sake of theatricality, but the truth is, the logic that navigates the basic storyline does make a lot of sense. While we looked at the powers and abilities of the Sacred Ancestor, we did mention that the abilities of each vampire are associated with that of the vampire god on the basis of the purity of their blood. So, on the basis of this statement, we can arrive at the conclusion that D, who is possibly the biological offspring of the Sacred Ancestor, may have the same levels of strength, intelligence, endurance, speed, and reflexes as his father. After all, only diamonds can cut other diamonds. Let's be honest, it would be in vain to visualize one such event where father and son face each other in an epic battle of wits and strength. With Kikuchi's spectacular world-building skills, alongside the phenomenal illustrations by Yoshitaka Amano, it would surely be a treat to witness such a riveting fight animated for anime fans across the globe. Marvelous Verdict The Sacred Ancestor's backstory is still shrouded in mystery, the sort that actually stemmed from the vampire films of the 1950s. Truth be told, Kikuchi derived inspiration to draft a post-apocalyptic vampire story from these high-contrast scenes of blood-stained fangs and pale-skinned human-like entities living in scary mansions. However, Kikuchi's Sacred Ancestor was quite distinct from the vampires of the 50s, not merely for its appearance, but also its aesthetics. As one of the most elusive figures in the Vampire Hunter D franchise, the Sacred Ancestor's presence was felt throughout the two films, though he never appears on screen. Such is the influence of the King of Vampires, to tug at the strings of our intrigue as we delve into the deepest recesses of ghostly castles full of blood and gore. And yet, his association with D, as well as with the other vampires in the story, could not have been simpler. And thus, it goes without saying that the Sacred Ancestor is an enigma of his own, a sort that is definitely worth exploring.